Today is a day that many people have been waiting a very long time for. Shimano finally and officially launches not one, but two new group sets. So we have Durace Di2 R9200 and Ultegra Di2 8100. Now we are being spoiled. In normal times, Durace will launch a year before Ultegra, but due to the pandemic, they've both been launched at the same time, which makes a lot of sense because both group sets share so much technology, just different materials and different price points. So it makes sense to launch them at the same time and makes the video much easier. Now, if you want to know more about the process of developing a new group set, the journey that Shimano goes on from updating the last group set to a new version, then definitely check out my podcast link down below and you can also watch it here on the channel as well. Really interesting and illuminating conversation that was. So definitely check out if you want to know more about the development process of this new group set. Now, as you can probably tell, I don't have my hands on the new group set yet, but I will be getting my hands on a group set for long-term testing here on the channel very soon, so make sure you hang around. But for now, let's dive in and take a closer look at all the tech details on Shimano's brand new group set. Let's start with Durace Di2 R9200, and much of what I'm talking about here applies to Ultegra as well, but we'll cover Ultegra separately at the end of the video. I'll put a chapter link down below so you can skip ahead if you want. So firstly, what it is and what it isn't. It is a 12 speed group set and joins Campag and SRAM in having 12 sprockets on its cassette up from 11 of the previous generation. And what it isn't is a full wireless group set like SRAM ETAP. It's a semi-wireless. So the shifters, the brake levers are separate and wireless from the rear mech and the front mech, which are wired together to a central battery inside the frame. The technology builds on existing DI2 tech and a focus on improved shifting speed, improved ergonomics, and a big focus on much better disc braking technology. There's still a rim brake version, but the rim brakes are unchanged from the previous version because as I found out in my podcast, Rim brakes have basically got as good as they'll ever get, and disc brakes have been a big focus, especially with a pro on all pretty much using disc brakes, bar a few uh, exceptions. There's also no mechanical version, and I think there's a really fundamental shift in the development and the evolution of dual race. Since it was launched back in the 70s, there's always been a mechanical version. But given the popularity of DI2 over the last 10 years, launched in 2011, I think, if memory serves me right, it's been hugely popular, and this new generation of group set offers no mechanical version for the first time in its history. So, sad news for some, I'm sure, but Shimano says its focus on racing, on performance and speed meant there was no need, no demand for a mechanical version. So it's all fully on board with electronic, with DI2. There's also some brand new wheels, but I'll cover those in a separate video and just focus on the group set changes in this video today. Probably one of the big stories with a new group set is the fact it's not a full wireless group set like SRAM Red ETAP, like many might have hoped. It's a semi wireless like FSA developed with their Wii group set a few years ago. What it means is the front and rear mech are wired together to a central battery inside the frame, so a separate loop there, and then the shifters are wireless. The obvious benefit to the wireless shifters is that there's cleaner integration at the front. And with a trend for aero bikes with one piece handlebars and stems and all the cables and hoses rooted inside, it should be easier to build a bike. Although get rid of the wires is half the problem, you still have the hydraulic disc brake hoses which have to go through the handlebar stem into a frame. So until they're wireless, you still have the same issues around building a bike. So marginally easier than before, but not as easy as it could be. And get this, if you're not a fan of wireless, there's still a wide option as well. So you can have DI2 wired if you don't want the wireless version they're offering today. And Shimano says that's good in certain situations, especially e-bikes where a wired option might be an easier setup. Now, DI2 has always, in my experience, offered really fast and very precise shifting speed. And not once riding a group set over the last four or five years, have I ever felt it was a bit slow and that it would be nice a bit quicker, but Shimano has made shifting speed even faster with this new group set. It claims the rear shifts are 58% faster and front shifts are 45% faster. 
and that's all due to improved motors and gear mechanisms and also helped by a new Hyperglide Plus chain and sprocket design brought over from the mountain bike technology. Let's talk about batteries and charging and here there are a few changes. So the new wireless shifters use a coin cell battery like SRAM with its ETAP and they last between 1.5 and 2 years according to Shimano's claims, last ages basically. The main battery inside the frame is good for up to 1,000 kilometers in their claim. That depends how you use a bike, whether you're shifting all the time on a hilly terrain or you're not shifting so much will depend on how you ride your bike. Shimano also says the improved DI2 technology reduces battery consumption by a whopping 75%. And while the main battery is still inside a frame, you can't remove it like you can with SRAM Red ETAP, they have made charging much easier. Now currently with DIT, you need a special charging cable and a USB cable, and you plug it into the port, either in the down tube or the handlebar, but now there's a charging port on the rear mech. So much easier to charge it up, put that cable on the rear mech and away you go. Don't need that special dongle anymore, just a supply USB cable and off you go. It's also the same cable used for charging the new power meter, which we'll talk about later. So one cable for charging a power meter and rear mech, so much easier in that regard. Ergonomics is an area that Shimano has worked on with a new group set as well. Although I don't think anybody has ever had any complaints about the ergonomics of the shifters with DI2, not in my experience. The compact shape, how small they are, has been a key feature compared to the bigger hoods offered by Campag and SRAM, but changes have been made. The main change that Shimano has made is to increase the height of the hood, so a bit taller than the old version or current version, and also angle them inboard a little bit as well. And that's probably a trend you've seen in the road racing peloton, where the hoods are angled quite dramatically inboard to get a bit more aero, or I say aero, but that's a trend that they've really gone after with the ergonomics of the new hoods. They've also moved the buttons outboard of the brake lever, so the buttons are proud of the brake lever to make it easier to change gear when you're in a drop, so you can feel the button more easily from the brake lever. And they've also extended the length of the shifter buttons, again, to make it easier to shift gear when you're in the drops. Shimano is still offering remote shifters with Durace Di2, so climb and sprint shifter buttons if you want those. Quite a few pros do use them. The new remote shifters are still wired to the hoods like before, it's a bit of a shame they're not wireless, like the shifters themselves, so you have more flexibility where you fit them, but that's the way they are. It's now easier to customise how the group set works with a new Durace and Ultegra group set. Now SRAM has really led the way of customisation with its ETAP group set, especially Axis. Got a nice smartphone app, makes it really easy to customise how the gear changes work. Now you could do that with the previous version of Durace, but you need a special Bluetooth dongle wired into the group set, but now it's much easier to do that straight out of the box. And from the smartphone app, you can choose how the gears change, whether it's synchro, uh, multi, check the firmware, check the battery life, do whatever stuff you expect to do on a modern group set. That SRAM has really shown away um, that sort of increased appetite for having apps for everything on your bike these days with increasing electronics, because electronics are really the big growth area, big area development for group sets for extracting more performance and having an app to control that and monitor it all is a way forward and that's what Shimano is now offering more easily. So as I mentioned at the top of the video, the new group sets are both 12 speed, joining Campag and SRAM in going 12 speed a couple of years ago. Now the reason for going 12 speed, it's not a case of keeping up with SRAM and Campag as uh, Tim from Shimano really went into detail in the podcast, link down below if you haven't listened to that yet. They went to 12 speed because of the feedback they got from pros and the feedback from the pros is really important in determining the direction, uh, the, the progress they make with a group set. And the idea of adding 12 speed basically comes down to making it easier for the pro teams and the pro riders to choose the right gearing option for the racing they're doing. So basically having fewer options, but the right options more of the time. Unlike SRAM, there's no 10-2 sprocket. They keep with the 11-2 sprocket and it's offering three cassettes. 11-28, 11-34, and a new, quite massive 11-34. It wasn't so long ago that 11-28 or 11-25 were the biggest you get with Durace, which is very much a race level group set. But now we have 11-34, 11-28, 11-34, 
I'm not sure the pros need an 1134, maybe some of the bigger climbing stages where you know, we are seeing a lot of big mountain summit finishes. But away from the pro peloton, we see a lot of amateur riders, you know, keen cyclists using dual race because they can afford it. And that 1134 makes it more accessible when you don't have the fitness of Chris Froome to get up those big mountain climbs. Now the main change brought about by that 12 sprocket is very similar to what Campag offered when they went to 12 speed. Rather than a fundamental redesign like SRAM did with their 12 speed group sets, Shimano has used it like Campag to fill in a gap on the two smaller cassettes, now offering a 16 tooth sprocket. So a smoother transition at that sweet spot, the business end of the cassette, where having that one tooth jump can make a big difference when you're in a fast moving peloton. And on the new 1134, that 12 sprocket now adds the 34 option with no changes through the rest of the cassette. As for chain sets, there are now three options. We have a 5034 compact, a 5236, so semi-compact, and a traditional 5339 has gone, that's dead, no longer an option. And that's replaced by the 5440, and that really is a sign of how fast the peloton is these days. And professional peloton, no sprint finishes, are super fast. And we've seen the pros often going up to 54 from the 53. And so Shimano recognizing that trend, the speed and the peloton, and offering that as a default option in place of the old 5339. So 5339 is dead. Who thought we'd be hearing that today? But that is the way it is. And if you're worried about needing to buy new wheels for these new cassettes, good news. The new 12 speed sprockets will fit a current 11 speed HG free hub body. So that's really good news but it has developed a brand new 12 speed free hub, which isn't a micro spline from the Shimano, but a modification of the current HG design with a few extra splines for a better interface on a 12 speed cassette, but you can use it on the 11 speed. So good backwards compatibility, really smart move there by Shimano, because they could have shot themselves in the foot there and forced everybody onto new wheels and all of the negative comments that would have ensued from that. For the mechanisms or derailers, whatever word you prefer to use for these parts of the bike, they're just one rear mech and just one front mech for all the cassette options. So that again, keeps it really simple. No myriad of options, just one rear mech, one front mech, a doddle. And that means you can go from 1128 up to 1134, from that 5034 compact chain set up to that massive uh, sprinter friendly 5440 chain set with no rear mech or front mech uh, swap needed. Let's talk about brakes, and the big focus here is on the hydraulic disc brakes. The rim brakes continue from the previous group set and they're unchanged because as Tim from Shaman told me in my podcast, rim brakes have got as good as they'll ever get. He's seen them develop over 20 plus years and they aren't getting any better basically unless there's some brand new sort of pad rim compound that destroys the rims in five minutes but gives you great stopping power. So there won't be any progress there. Instead, the focus is on hydraulic disc brakes. And we saw with the previous version of Dual Race R9100 launch in 2016, the first proper integration of hydraulic disc brakes into that Dual Race group set with Dual Race labeling, branding on the brakes. Now we have another big step forward and they really try to address some of the you know, fatty concerns in the community and use the feedback from the Pro Peloton because disc brakes have been used in a Pro Peloton for two years, three years now. And pretty much all the teams, bar one exception, are using disc brakes. And most of the teams are using Shimano. So that's a lot of feedback for Shimano to really focus on the key changes they need to make on these new disc brakes and hopefully alleviate some of the problems, concerns that people have with disc brakes. So the main change, aside from the different looks, are a 10% improved pad clearance. So more clearance between the pad and the disc. And that should alleviate some of the rubbing issues you get. You're riding in bad weather, you get grit and rain in there and some of the tolerances you might have issues with with different frames. Although Shimano does say that the improvement made by its partner, so the frame manufacturers and the fork manufacturers, have ensured that the tolerances are much better when fitting hydraulic disc brakes, but it's extra clearance should make life a lot easier. At the levers, they're using a servo wave technology from their mountain bike side of things with a 13% wider control area. So it should alleviate those rubbing issues and create less potential for drag and give a nicer lever feel as well. It's also switching over to the MT900 XTR mountain bike disc rotors, which many of the pro teams have been using because they give a claimed 66% reduction in heat deformation. So that is really an admission of sorts 
that the previous disc brake rotors weren't up to scratch, weren't good enough. And we now know the real reason that many pro teams were switching to the XTR rotors or do a heat management and they're a little bit lighter as well. And finally, it has made the bleeding process much easier. And that's great news if you're not coming from a mountain bike background where bleeding disc brakes are part and parcel of maintaining a mountain bike. Your pure roadie coming from cable operated rim brakes, having that bleeding process much easier is good news. Although in my experience, you don't bleed the brakes that often, you do it once and you're good for a couple of years. But it's nice to know it's much easier than before. There's a brand new dual sided power meter offered with a new group set. They reposition the pods a little bit on the cranks, as you can see, with a claimed 1.5% accuracy, 300 hour runtime, stable power measuring with active temperature conversation using the same uh, charging cable as the rear mech as well. That's about all the details I know. Again, it's a product you need to get my hands on and retest and compare it to other power meters and see how it performs out in the real world. So that about sums up all the changes and technical developments on the new Durace Di2 R9200 group set. Now I turn our mind to the brand new Ultegra Di2 R8100 group set. And fundamentally, they're essentially the same group set. Different colors, yes, different materials in key places to keep the price of Ultegra lower than Durace and a small weight penalty. But while Durace is using a pro peloton and the choice of those with deep pockets who can afford it and money is no option, Ultegra is and will always be the smart choice because essentially you get the same performance, the same functionality as Durace, but at a much lower price point. And you might see my video on Ultegra uh, two years ago, link above if you missed it and how much I love that group set and how it offers great value for money. So like Durace, Ultegra is now a 12 speed semi wireless group set. Got the same ergonomic changes, same wire technology, the same improved shifting speed, the same improved disc brake technology. There is still a rim brake version. There is no mechanical shifting option, unfortunately. There is a dual side power meter, a first for Ultegra, and a few different changes on the cassette and crankset options. So we have just two cassettes, 1130 and 1134, and two cranksets in 5034 and 5236. So if you want that 1128 and the 5440, the big racing gears, you still need to go to dual race. Ultegra is positioned less as a racing focused group set, but more as a wider appealing group set. For people doing sporties, grand fondos, just bashing around the countryside on a Sunday with a club, but still a bit racing as well. Those then are all the changes on the brand new Shimano dual race and Ultegra group set launched today. Like I said earlier, I will get my hands on a group set very soon to put it through its paces here in the Cotswolds and see how it handles and performs and how it compares to SRAM and Campag's option and also the previous benchmark set down by Shimano. I can't wait to find out if it's that good as it sounds on paper. It's got quite a few questions in mind I want to answer when I review the group set, but some of it is really exciting. So I can't wait to really get my hands on it and see how it performs. At the point, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down below and let me know what you think. And uh, you think it's a good thing, bad thing, you like what they're doing, or you're a bit disappointed. I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. And don't forget my podcast link down below if you want a more in-depth uh, discussion around the development of a group set and what it takes to bring a group set to market with a new Durace and Ultegra launch today. Anyway, that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.